Okay. I'm just going to do a full analysis of the chords for angels we have heard on high. And your job, at least in this particular class, what I'm doing it for, is to follow along, make sure that you can recognize the chords, um, and that you are reinforcing chord symbols and figured bass, as well as soft skills and other pieces of information you can pick up. I'm going to go kind of quick, so you're welcome to slow the video down or pause it whenever you need to. Angels we have heard on high, we're going to presume you know how this goes. It's a Christmas carol. Uh, one flat, looks like we're in the key of F because it's a major key. So I put a big F right there, uppercase, so we know it's a major key. And then that will inform how we interpret the chord symbols. So. There's a phrase. We expect phrases to start on the one chord and end on the one chord and five chord. You can see F, F, A, C. This is a one chord, it's uppercase, so we do this. You don't need to do this again because it's just the same thing here, okay? And just so you know, we can go and look across. Now, here's something you might do inside this phrase rather than going chord by chord by chord by chord is look for similar structures. See how this right here is the same as that right there? It's definitely a one chord. It's halfway through the phrase, right? And then here, same structure again. I know I said you didn't have to repeat, but it feels like at the beginning of the phrase, we'll just do that again. And at the end, well, that's actually not the one right there, so. But at the end, there's, it's kind of slightly voiced differently, but we expect this to be one or five. One is F in the F scale, C is five. And this is F, A, F, F. It's not complete, but there's enough there. Just like if you say roses are red, violets are, we know that it's going to be blue unless you're going to be ironic about it, okay? Because these are in root position, meaning that the lowest note in the stack here is the root of the chord, there is implied a figured bass 5-3, right? Meaning that another note in the chord would be a third above, that's my A right there, and then a fifth above, that's my C right there. But because we're doing figured bass, we just... That's not a very good eraser. Oh well, we just um, don't write anything there. It's still there, it's invisible, it's implied, it's shorthand, okay? Now we'll go through and check some other things. So here, it goes up to an A. It could be the third of the F, A, C chord, in this which we would just change our figured bass to be six, three, implying it's the same chord, but it has become inverted. However, we need to check that. And so when we look above, because this would be an F, A, C chord, you've got the A and the C, and you've got the A and the C, but there's an E right there, so that's not F, A, C, right? In fact, that's A, C, E, which is A minor, so it's a different chord. A minor is three in this key, so it's a little odd to find a three chord, but it's kind of nice. We use lowercase because it's a minor chord. Right, and it's the same here, even though the note has changed here. It's just repetitions of the same notes, okay? Then here is our first sort of little challenging thing. We have a G and a D and a G and a C. That doesn't make any triad that you'd know. Um, but, but it's a G chord, okay? And we know this just because the next chord's a five, and twos like to go to five, and G is two. And if uh, we were looking at the structure, you see how the, the lower notes right here in the left hand make like a root and fifth, and there's another root right there? This is what we hear, and this is the tune, which has a tension note or a non-chord tone. This C is held over, it's called a suspension, and then resolves back down. So it's good to know chord progression, what chord can go to what chord. And it's, it's good to be able to look and prioritize the structures you see in the lower notes because they control things. I think I mentioned in class when we sort of talked about this a little bit that, um, you know, if you have a choir and the bass is sing sharp, the sopranos sound flat. It's not the other way around uh, because the lower notes control our perception of the harmony. And it's the same thing with structures. This is more integral, this is less so. It's not 100%, but it's a good rule of thumb. Anyway, this is a G, G, D, B should be in there, but currently it's suspended into the C right there. So we're gonna call this a two, and it's a minor two. Now, in figured bass land, 
you know, it's a root position chord and you'd say 5, 3 and there's nothing there. But if you remember, the 5 would be this note right there and the 3 would be the B flat right there. And there isn't one really. So we have an irregular figured bass suite here. We'd put the 5 in right there, but instead of a 3, we'd have a 4 right there. Just like that. Okay. Now, I don't know. First year, first term, maybe that's a little too far, but you should understand that the figured bass notes tell you the, or figures tell you the important notes to play above a given bass line or bass note, and 5-3 uh, just happens to make the root position triad. When you get really sticky about it and go back to the Baroque period, they just told you what notes to play, and usually they were chord tones, but not always. Like in this case, this would be a thing you'd see and it'd say, oh, right, don't play the third the sus4 right there okay all right we're gonna move on c chord c c e i know the g it's like where's the g it's implied it's there it's enough of it but we also have this b flat here so if you think c c e g b flat that's a seventh on the chord you could think of it as a passing note but it's a five chord and because it's not a triad we're going to put a seven there remember that there's an implied 7-5-3, right? But 7 is the shorthand, and that's all we need. All right? Uppercase 5 with the bars across. This is also a C chord, C, C, E, G. It's 5. No 7th on that. Here, we have the A, C, but if you look above, it's not a 3 chord, because there's an F, F, A, C. It's the 1 chord. Now, we've labeled the 1 chord here. It's the same chord, we don't need to label it again. On a test or something, you could, to be sure, but we would just go like this and put six there. Because six is shorthand for six, three. Remember, above this note is the three, and above this note, way up here, is the six, if you reduce it, and six tells us that the root is there, right? So six, three is the long hand that we've been learning, but we can just do the abbreviated six right there. So it's a one chord in first inversion, right? Here, we get to a C, a C, an F, and an A. It's still a one chord, but now the fifth is in the bass. And so it's a six, four. Now, new, hmm, new bar. Um, this is a cadence idiom. I am gonna put the one right there. Six, four tells me that this is the fifth of the chord and the root is a fourth above on the F and the other note is a sixth above right there. And then here it comes back down. It does something very similar to there. You can see the structures. It's got the C and the C, right? It's got the E right there. The G is there now, and the B flat's there. This is another five with my seven right there, shorthand for seven, five, three. You don't know this yet, or maybe you do if you're doing this as a review, but when we find a cadence point and we see a one, six, four going to a five, we bracket the whole thing underneath and throw a five under there to tell us that this isn't actually a truly a one chord in function. It's functioning like an ornamentation of the five. So we put this and zone it out and say this is actually all dominant or five function. Okay? All right. That's a lot. Let's go on to the next line. And for the next line, I'm going to cheat. Look, that's the same. Look, that's the same. This is really good to know the music. That's why we picked Christmas Carol, because most people are familiar with it, and it helps you with the first step of analysis, which is just to get to know your music. Now, this looks different than that. We're going to deal with that in a minute, but right now we're going to use my rule, which is when something's difficult, just isolate it. In video games, we call it kiting, right? Until all the other things are taken care of. That's this. It's a one chord right there. This looks the same. That's a 5-7 right there and you're going wait you're cheating you're not learning it. it's like no i'm being smart that's the same that's the same that's the same uh this it looks similar um yeah we're just going to deal with it right now this is the same up here that's there the same there the a is just down an octave for color and so it's still a one six right first inversion thirds in the base this is the same idiom exactly as the top Right, so one, six, four, going to a five with a seven, bracketed underneath to tell me this is all five function, taking us to the one chord right there. 
We're not going to deal with cadence names and things. You haven't learned that in this particular class at this time, but there we go. Nice. All right. Now, this is where it starts to get a little sticky. In the last class, at least at the time when I'm doing this, we talked about figured bass for chords with sevenths on them, and that's why we have this five with the seventh, and that's implied seven, five, three, but that always just fades when you don't need to specifically put something there. Uh, and we have a funny texture, and so this is where analysis gets more difficult for beginning students because it's hard to know what notes are part of the chord and what are not. But remember, we have some priorities here. First off, we can look at the beginnings and ends of phrases and look for ones and ones and fives and things like that. And then also, the lower notes generally generally tell us more about the harmony than the upper notes. It's not always true. Sometimes there's a nice stacked chord up top, but but these can tell us things about that. Like the tie, you know, in the case of a tie, these these are the ones that sort of arbitrate and tell us what they are. And then there's another thing called harmonic rhythm, which is how often do the chords change? And in this case, it looks like the chords are changing about once every half a measure, although it does look like they invert. Let me show you how I, I got that. First off, beginning of a new phrase, I suspect one chord, F, A, F, C. That's my one chord right there, right? And then it pops up to the A and goes down. So there's glow, oh, 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 like that. Well, in the context of this overwhelming F chord right here, this is just a non-chord tone. In the second term, we learn how to label them and write with them and things like that. But it's, it's for color and for adding stuff to the line. So it's an F chord, and this is just like an outlier, right? It's for ornamentation. All right, here, see how the bass note went to a D, and we have another D here. We have a D there. This is very structural, right? It's in the lowest part right there. And you should always start with, is it the root? And then if not, is it the third? It could be the fifth, but unless it's part of like a, a, an idiomatic pattern, like do, so, do, so, da, 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 or it's part of like a, a special thing, like a one, six, four, five, seven, second inversion triads are kind of rare. And we'll spend some time looking exactly on how they, they work, but that's next term as well. So I suspect this is a D chord. And if I look, there's a D and a D and an F and a D. And now these would not be part of the D chord for sure, but there's my A and there's a D and an F. You can do what I call the guitar ukulele test, which is strum the D minor chord that would go here. And if you go like one and then six, which is my D minor, and it sounds right, then you can tell that these are all sort of passing or filler notes like this. And so we have a D, D, F, D. It looks like a D, F, A chord to me. I don't think these are part of the chord right there. And it, like I said, if you go with the piano or on your instrument that you have and play a D minor chord after you play the F right here and sing through, you'll find that that fits really nicely, right? Okay, so that would be a six chord because in the F scale, D is note number six and it's a minor chord. And then here, this inverts. So it's the same chord for this whole two beats because the harmonic rhythm stays fairly constant, except sometimes it speeds up a bit of cadences. And so here we would put a, a six to tell us that it is inverted shorthand for six, three to the third right there. And now it looks like we're gonna have a new chord right here, okay? Um, G, B flat, D. Looks like a two chord, right? Now, that's fine. So we'll put our two lowercase right there. I hope this is big enough. Well, oh, I think it's showing up, it's fine. Um, there's an F that holds over right there. Now, in one hand, it's what's called a suspension, when a non-chord tone, sorry, a chord tone holds over when the chord changes and becomes a non-chord tone, and then resolves down. And this would be ornamentation right there. So it is a suspension figure, however, it can also be thought of as a seventh because G, B, D, F, right? Either way, I think we can put that in there as a figured base right there, right? So there's my seven for seven, five, three, right? Now it pops up, but then pops down again, and then it resolves down. And this is the way you'll find out that we like sevens to resolve. They like to go down by step to the third of the next chord. Um, so there we go. Now. Later, you're going to have information about sequences and things, and you know that two likes to go to five, and on and on and on. However, when five likes to go to one and stuff, 
So we could sort of blind eyeball this and say two is going to go to five and five is going to go to one. And then we have a pattern of two going down to five, which is by a, that's six going to two is down by a fifth if you count. Two going to five is down by a fifth if you count. And five going down to one is also going down by a fifth. So we expect this to go down to four, which is a fifth below. Do the math out for that. But six goes down to two, goes down to five, goes down to one, goes down to four. This is what we call the circle of fifths. When you start a pattern like this, we like to keep doing it until we break out of it. So it's a trick. Oh, my light went out. Let's, uh, let's do that again, shall we? Turn that on again. There we go. All right. So, but indeed, it's a C chord. C, C, E, and C. Now, we could go back and, well, I'm just going to call it that for right now. So it's my five, right? And then see how it inverts up? C, E right there. So six. Oh, dear. Looks like I've lost, lost power on my light. I'm going to turn on the other light. Okay, not as bright, not quite as cool, but I think it will still show up all right. Okay. So, um, five likes to go to one, and it's a one right there, oh, except we have this E there again. So F, A, C, E, that's my seventh again. You see with this pattern going on here? So this would be my one, and it's got a seven. Now, depending on the textbook you use, they may say to put a large M right there, just to remind you that it's a major seventh as opposed to like a dominant, which would be a five seven, which is a major trident and a minor. We're gonna do that, okay? And then one goes down a fifth to a four chord, and that would be a B flat chord, and with B flat, B flat, D, B flat, right? And again, the seventh results down there after it, you know, goes back up to the root and back down again, All right? So, that's my four chord right there. This is my inversion, third in the bass. And then here is four going to a C chord again, C, E, G, C, or G, right? So it's a five chord, but the third's in the bass. So that's a six instead of a six, three. I'm gonna help you out there. Those are passing notes, they don't count. They're just walking down. And then here's my C chord again, C, E, C, C, right? The G's missing, but and that's gonna be in root position, so I'm gonna put a five there so that I know that, you know, and the three is, in, well, five, three, it's implied. There's actually no five in the voicing, so maybe we take that out. In the strictest sense, that G did not go down to the F, right? And, uh, that G did not hold over right there. Sorry, the, the G didn't hold over and the G didn't hold over, so it's missing. Uh, three. I'm gonna put a five in there anyways, even though it's strictly not there, just to remind myself that it's root position. Now, here's a funny thing. This is the C, E, G, B flat is right there. That's my seventh of the chord. And this might be a deep dive, but if you remember, seven means root position, six, five meant first inversion. 4, 3 meant second inversion, and a 7th in the bass is just a 2. Some books will make you do 4, 2, but it just has to be a 2. So I put the 2 there to remind me that that's the 7th of the chord. We're in 3rd inversion, okay? One last thing. You could go back and say technically that that's the 7th of this chord, and that's the 7th of this chord, and that's the 7th of this chord, and we could add those back in. So if that were the case, I'm just going to do this down here, six with a seven, and this would become not a six, but a six, five, because it's a seventh chord with the third in the bass, and then this would become a five, seven, and this would become a five, six, five, and this would become a four, and four is our major chords with the seven, so I put a major seven, and then I put a six, five right there. If you want to interpret them all as seventh chords, right, because of that note there, and that note there, and that note there, right? Or you can just put them as double, right? All right, last row. Um, coming off of a five chord, right? We want to go to one. And here's my one chord, F, F, A, C, but the bass is the third of the chord. 
So I go one, and instead of six, three, I just do a six, tells me that the third's in the bass. This is my five chord right there, C, C, E, G, right? Here's my F, F, A, C, it's a one chord. This is just going one, five, one. Different here, we look and say, oh, there's a B flat. This is a B flat chord, B flat, B flat, D, F, yeah? So that's four. I'm just gonna pause for a second here. If I'm going too fast for you to say, oh, I don't recognize these notes, or I don't put them into the structure of the triad, just as a student, that's fine, but that's where we wanna get. So you can diagnose for yourself, is it reading the notes? Is it reading the bass notes? Is it taking these things and then putting them into chords? And if it is the chords themselves, then are you, um, are you not pre-anticipating what kind of chords would be in this key, right? So, because it's not just any chords, they're probably going to be F chords and C chords. And sometimes a, sometimes a six chord will be a D chord, and sometimes it'll be a four chord, which will be a B flat chord. And so you can pre-anticipate. You can get faster at all these things, of course, by sharpening up your note reading. And then instead of naming them and keeping them in your head, like I'm going to do this one right here, okay? You could go like this, C, C, F, A. It's out of your head now. You don't have to juggle that while you figure out the chord, and then you can go, well, C, E, G, no, F, A, C, yes, right? So you write it down. You can also, not that you wanna to have to do this always as a crutch, you can write out like the F scale, F, right? G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F, and you go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And so you could use that to help you determine the numbers. This is an F chord. Fifth is in the bass, so we use six, four. And this is a C, C, E, G. This is a five, right? And this is one of those cadence things right there. So like this. I've even seen some things where they go, I'm just gonna put this above, they go, the whole thing is five and they go five, six, four, going to a five, five, three, six, four, because that's what's going on there if you think of it all as dominant function. For us, just to get used to things right now, we're just gonna keep it simple. Say it's a one chord in six, four. You're learning that when you see these at cadences and it goes to a five, you bracket them and call them a five, okay? And we might be done. This is the same as this, not gonna write it in. This is the same as this, not gonna write it in. And as I flip over the page, same, same, same. Same, same. The only thing that's different is right here, right there. So C, C, F, A. It's one of those one, six, fours, just like there. Okay. So one chord, because it's a C, C, F, and A, right? With a six, four. And this is a one, one, like F, F, A, C. That's a one right there. And this is my C, C. It holds over. These come down, just like these will come down to a five three, right, over the C, which is my five, and then we bracket it like this, but wait, there's also this note right there, which is my seven. So you can see that the six, four goes to the, six goes to the five, the four goes to the three, right, it's a figured base, but it also the eight goes to the seven. So in our realm, we do this, we're just going to call this a five, seven, because that's what it is. In the more functional use of figured bass back in the day in the broke period you would have had the c there and they would have done something like this they would have gone eight six four because they wouldn't even write a like a chord number because you'd play this and you knew that somewhere above this note you'd play a, a four which is my root and somewhere above this note you play a six which is that right there and then they'd also drop in this octave right there because they wanted you to connect it like this these would be the actual numbers you'd see so that the keyboardist knew over top of this C to play the root and the third and a double lock or fifth and then a, sorry, root and third and then a double fifth, sorry. Yeah, double fifth right there at the octave and then each one of these gets brought down. In fact, this might have been even delayed over like this. So it would have been to there, right? To join the last beat and then to one. For our purposes, just one, six, four, five, seven, know that this is a thing that happened historically. And we're done. All right, come back another day and we will do um, the Herald Angels 
practicing. Um, be sort of the same thing. There's lots of repetitions and stuff in here. Again, it's to get you ready so you get better at analysis and better with your figured base and your chord symbols. All right, that's it.